Welcome back to the Trevor Tysman Show. Today, I wanted to work on a maintenance program for you to bulletproof your body. As you age, it seems like every client I've ever worked with, and myself included, we've got shoulders, knees, and back that need to become a part of your maintenance routine to make sure that you're not feeling any pain. Let's start with the routine in general. If you're exercising two to three times a week, this should be part of your dynamic warm-up. If you're exercising five times a week, this should be a part of your dynamic Warm up. And what that means is when you're getting loose, whether you're lifting weights, whether you're doing some kind of a yoga style workouts, whether it even be a hit based cardio, the key is that you get in this maintenance window of about 10 minutes and hit a bunch of these problem areas because flexibility range of motion, and working through some resistance bands exercises can make these joints feel an awful lot better. Let's break it down for you. Let's start with the shoulder. I like to get a little bit loose with some dynamic movements, just some trunk twisters, possibly even back pedals, or even get on a bike for about three to four minutes. Just some kind of a cardio-based movement that gets your heart beating a little bit. You can do knee raises, leaning over from left to right. Just get the upper body moving a little bit, and then let's start with the shoulders. You're going to grab some three to five pound dumbbells, or you can even get some soup cans. These are used for baseball players across the world that are trying to make sure that they keep their shoulders nice and healthy. But we're going to utilize this technique for our everyday training. It's called a Joe. You're going to grab these and you're going to go at a 45 degree angle for 10 repetitions. Three second counts on the way down. What that'll do is it's going to increase a lot of blood flow to the area, but be sure that you utilize that three second count on the way down. Don't lift the weights up and then drop them quickly. Nice and easy, slow and controlled, take them down. You're going to do 10 repetitions, then you'll go out to the side. 10 repetitions, then you're going to go empty soups. This really should take you maybe a minute, minute and a half to move through this routine. After you get through there, shake your arms around a little bit, walk around for maybe a minute, and then repeat the process. You're going to do two total sets, but every one of them is going to be with a loaded scap. Roll your shoulder blades back and down, and then you'll do these angles. The first time you feel that loaded scap position, you're going to feel a little off. It's going to feel as if most of the focus is in your back only because you've never felt this before. That's gonna go away over time, but be sure that you're not doing it high into your traps. Oftentimes when I work with a new individual and we do these exercises, they load the scap high and to your ears. That's not what you want. You wanna load back and then down. And when you get down, now that shoulder will be in a perfect position to target the areas that you wanna target. Finish those two areas and then you're gonna drop down on the floor and grab a belt a towel, a ballistic band, any type of a long, sturdy object. Don't grab the really, really light resistance bands. You want to make sure that you've got a little stronger one because we need it to be resilient to the pulling angles that we're going to do. Your back is tied to your hamstrings and your IT bands and your glutes just as much as it is focusing on the back muscles. This particular round is going to be great for our knee and our back. So you're going to go through static stretches for your hamstring. Wrap that resistance band, belt towel, whatever you've decided to use around your leg. Now you're going to pull that up in a linear fashion right towards your chest, and this is going to target your hamstrings. You'll do your hamstring angle, 15, 20 second hold. Then you're going to take that foot out wide, and you're going to get a little bit more of a groin. Now the key is for our back, we want hamstrings and glutes. So to move this into a glute stretch, you're going to rotate your knee around and bring your foot towards your stomach. As you pull that band up nice and tight, you're going to feel that pull through your lower back and into your glutes. If you are extremely tight, as soon as you rotate your knee in and you bring your foot up, you'll feel that pull. Just sit at the very edge of discomfort. You don't need to make yourself miserable. But that is the spot that's really going to get into all those insertion points up in your lower back is by rolling your hips up as you really get into that stretch. So get it a little loose for the first round and then let it relax for two, three, four, five seconds, and then go ahead and pull it back up again. This glute stretch is for sure going to be one of the best ones you could do because you're supporting the joint. If you feel a little pressure in your knee, take one hand off and put it on your knee, 
and then use the other with the band wrapped around your foot and lift it towards your chest. Now we've got a lot of support for the knee and you'll get that stretch all the way into your hip and even somewhat of your upper part of your hamstring. When your IT band is tight, oftentimes you'll feel it in your knee because your leg is not functioning the same. The more you're sitting down, the more you're inactive, your glutes are turning off and your IT bands get insanely tight as your body begins to utilize it to walk. So our goal is to alleviate tension in the IT band so it'll take some stress off of our knee. What you'll do is let's say you've got your right leg. We've been doing each of those exercises, the hamstring, the glute exercise, and now we're going to move into the IT band. The IT band is tricky. You want to keep both hips directly on the floor laying on your back. Next, you'll slide your left hand across your body and your right foot will slightly cross the midline across your pelvis down low by your foot. Anytime that I've worked with a new client that has bad knees or a lot of tension in their IT band or pain towards the outside of their knee, you really do feel this stretch as soon as you cross the shin. And as you get there, it'll be quite uncomfortable and what you're going to want to do is roll your hip up. If you roll your hip, you're going to take the IT band out of it and you'll feel it more in your glutes and your lower back. This is not what we're trying to do here. This particular stretch can be great for your IT band as long as your hips are square to the floor. So let's say this is my leg. I'm taking my right leg and I move it over here. This low angle will most likely where you'll feel the stretch begin. The band is on the same side that the leg is moving to. So if I'm stretching my right leg, I'm going to have the band around my foot. I'm going to put the band in my left hand, slide it across my left leg, and now I'm stretching my right leg with the band in my left hand. As you get a little bit looser, as I said, the same way you did your glute, start with that on the edge of discomfort stretch. Hold it for 10 or 15 seconds. Now you're going to want to relax it a minute, come out of there for 20, 30 seconds, move your knee around a little, and now you'll take it just a little bit farther. After a week or two of this, you'll find that you've moved up several inches. Continue searching for more range of motion. The more range of motion you have through these joints, the less your back will hurt, the less your knee will hurt. Of course, any of these types of movements, if you have crazy discomfort or you have some kind of an injury, it's not a magic formula here. These are general maintenance techniques that can be utilized to keep full range of motion in problem areas that can give you pain in your knees, give you pain in your back. And as long as they're all loose and functioning properly and you don't have permanent damage that's actually causing the pain, you're going to find that it's just tightness that seems to be your issue. My knee always bothers me when my IT bands and my quads get too tight. The tricky part is, is that my quads get too tight because my hip flexors are too tight. I'm sitting too much. I'm doing a lot of movements where I'm really taxing my quads. My hip flexors get a little bit tight. If I don't keep working hip flexor quad length, my IT bands get a little knotted up and then that's when I get the pain. I get the pain from my IT band. When I target my IT band, continually going through my lower extremity stretches, get my quads nice and loose, lo and behold, the quads and the knees feel just fine. So that's what I'm suggesting here. Move through this maintenance routine so that you too can feel a lot better because your body needs more range of motion. You're getting bound up, you're sitting too much, and you do not have the range of motion adequate to make sure that you're not pinching any types of nerves or causing pains from big tension points in your quads, IT bands, and your glutes. Do this simple three slot stretch right down the middle for the hamstring, the glute stretch, and then come over for the IT band stretch all in sequence. Do the right leg, then do the left leg. If you're really, really tight, I would suggest rolling through them twice. But this should not take very long. I'm telling you, these kind of stretches, when you do the shoulder into this leg, you're probably five to six minutes into this routine as your warm up, and you're actually targeting areas that are going to alleviate pain. The last portion of this maintenance stretch routine is going to be for your back. You've got your lower half warmed up. Now you're going to move into your back. I would highly suggest standing up and touching your toes a little bit and squatting down so that your hips get a little bit of mobility in them before we hang. If you're new to hanging, make sure that you use some weightlifting straps or even some strong ballistic bands to take some of the weight out of your body during the hang. But if you utilize a pull-up bar that is a 
adequate distance where your feet can still hit the ground, this is what I would strongly suggest. Because if your feet are still on the ground, you can control the amount of weight that you have in your body tremendously. Place your feet on the ground, you kind of take a little bit of weight off by lifting up somewhat on your feet or just not applying as much pressure to the floor and you'll be lighter in your hands. Hanging is going to be an interesting feeling for those of you that have never hung before. When you first start, I like to take it right at about shoulder width apart. There's going to be some other techniques where you can do a really wide grip or a super narrow grip that all feel a little bit different. But if you're first starting, just start with a nice shoulder width apart. And what you're going to do is you're going to lower your body, but you're going to put your feet underneath you and bend at the hips so you're more in a seated position. In this position, you'll be able to load the spine nice and straight, or I should say decompress the spine nice and straight. If you place your feet way out in front, what you'll find is you're actually got a little curve to your back. We don't want that. So bend at the hip and stack your spine up nice and straight so that when you hang, you'll feel all of those vertebrae slowly separate. But what you're also going to feel is tons of tension be released from your shoulders and your traps. That hanging sensation can also alleviate an awful lot of pain or tension you feel in your neck. You can get a lot of pain just kind of right at the base of your neck and sometimes higher if you get your traps too tight. Do you look down a lot at your phone? Do you spend too much time with babies staring down at the ground? And I don't mean too much time as if it's bad, but if you spend a lot of time looking down, your neck can be a big issue. Are you working on computers where you have your head set forward slightly? Most of the time, what you'll find is your traps start kicking in and really holding up that head more and more and more. Well, what happens when we overuse a muscle? You get a ton of tension that can sometimes lead to pain. So during this hanging technique, you'll find that on the first set, you're going to feel a whole lot of tension in your shoulders, your traps, and your mid-back through your rhomboids. Hang there for about 15, 20 seconds. I like to keep the first set very short because it feels a little odd as things begin to move. The next set, grab it again, stack up the spine, and then this time you'll probably really feel your spine start elongating, maybe even some small pops, as well as your shoulders. I swear it feels like you're getting two or three inches longer. This simple technique can do a whole lot for range of motion throughout the shoulders and the back. It's simple. It's really that simple. This maintenance routine should be thought of as a warm-up, but there are consistent things that you should be doing each and every time to get around these pain points because we maintain great range of motion. Hit the shoulders, hit the legs, hit the hangs, then move into your workout. It's really that simple. If you've got any questions, please feel free. Leave a comment below on YouTube, or if you're on Spotify, that is where I will chit-chat back and forth with you. Like and subscribe to the channels. I appreciate all the support and we'll be back at it again tomorrow.